It's Movie Time. It's produced by John DeSanto. Listen to shows and read reviews online at wcbe.org. I'm John DeSando. And I'm K.G. Klein. And this is It's Movie Time. This is It's Movie Time. And oh my goodness. Well, let's talk about a film that nobody has seen. <laughs> oh my gosh, Scott. Okay, so folks, when you hear me, you know it's a tough one. John never brings right. me in for the no, Ant-Man no, or no, the Cocaine right. Bear. Or even Creed. No. Or even Creed. I get the ones that nobody <laughs> seems to quite understand. Uh, but that's okay. This is this is a really important film. And I'm really honored to be able to talk about this. It's called After Sun. It's called After Sun. After and the Sunday. reason we're here is that next week, that is this Sunday, this coming Sunday, Sunday is going to be the Oscars, and one of the nominees for Best Actor is Paul Meskel, who and appears he's the in the After Sun. He After Sun. yes, he plays the uh, the lead adult opposite an eleven year old girl. And boy, I'll let me say her name, Frankie Corio. Yeah, and she is. Terrific. First time actress and she wow. knocks it out of the park. Whoa. Yeah. And just, is she going to be a looker? Oh, she it's just going to be amazing. <laughs> She's yeah. 11 years old in this film. Yeah. And much older than she should be. This this, this father son thing or father daughter thing reminds me a little bit of Paper Moon. If you oh, remember yeah, that. Yeah, right. sure. Really really tremendous performances from both the adult and the child. And if you remember Paper Moon, it was the it was Jodie Foster who yeah, got the nomination. Sure. Yes. And our director is Charlotte Well. Charlotte Well is a Scottish uh, uh, director. Yeah. This is her first major film. She's only done one short film prior to this. Yeah. And a pretty good job, I think. Oh my gosh! So it's different. It's different. It's a different movie. That's why I have Ken here because it is not your usual film, even as an art film, I think. Not at all. We are being called on right now to talk about, to, to describe the story of a movie that has no real story. <laughs> it doesn't. This, this film has no I, narrative. We're looking at each other and wondering, hey, really? What just happened? Well, it, it calls to mind the, the, the art critics back in the early 1900s when they saw the first Picassos. You know, many of them would look and go, what is that? But others would say, no, this is important. This is something that we need to address because this is good, but it's not something we've seen before. And that's what After Sun is. Yeah. After Sun is a kind of movie making, a kind of storytelling that we really have not been exposed to before. It's a movie without narrative yeah. designed to invoke emotions. And it is. it fits my memory, which is impressionistic. You have a combination of both, a very precise <laughs> memory and impressionist. I don't have your precise memory. I enjoy Impressionist art, and I enjoy when directors and artists take chances. And Charlotte Wells definitely took a chance with this, and I think it works beautifully. Some critics are saying that this is the only film from 2022 that will be considered a classic in years to come. And I would argue that that is probably true. Let me That's give you an example. True. I'm looking at Kenneth saying, uh, what happened to his arm? He's, it's in a cast, mm -hmm. and we subsequently find out that he broke his wrist, right? He broke his wrist. But you're not going to know that, right? No, no. <laughs> she is not going to tell no, you. No, she's not going <laughs> to tell you that. She deliberately does not tell you a lot of the key points of this film because she wants you to concentrate on the emotional impact of the relationship between the father and the daughter much more than she wants you to concentrate on details. There's no exposition in this movie, folks. There's no <laughs> moment. Look, we do know they went... They went in Turkey. They went to Turkey they from Turkey. London. You think? From from probably in the UK somewhere. Yeah, I think so. I think yeah. that he he had moved from Scotland to London, and that's what separated. Well, them. and this is so. Uh, let's talk and a little detail, bit about, uh, about what the story is yeah, as yeah, there is. Yeah. So the film is about a 31 year old woman who um, who is gay. We know this. This is an LGBTQ film in a year of a lot of Boy, great LGBTQ cinema. No, not obvious. Well, but this is a year of great LGBTQ cinema. We have Tar, we have The Whale, we have My Policeman, Bros, and I, I can go on and on. This is probably the most important, I think, LGBTQ film of them all because it is really not about the LGBTQ element as much as it is about the, the, the feelings and the emotions. So we, this is a 31-year-old woman. She's in an apartment in New York City with her girlfriend or wife. We don't know. They have just apparently had a baby. And she is experiencing some kind of emotional conflict that she has pulled out old videotapes that were taken 20 years earlier of herself when she was 11 and her father when they took a vacation for his 30th birthday to a budget resort in Turkey. Uh, it would be the last time she would ever see him. 
Um, that's only vaguely referenced in the film, and you could easily miss that, but it's the last time she would ever see him. And we, she is watching these tapes, trying to, trying to learn more about her father as an adult, as opposed to the way she viewed her father as an 11-year-old, because there's emotions, there's conflicts that were going on in his life that she missed as an 11-year-old that she's now perceptive of when she's the same age she was. And uh, I'll tell you the brilliance for me, for Wells, is that this is exactly the way I was trying to deal with my memory from my old videos, which were, they were like 8 millimeter, I think, mm -hmm. and, and you had scratches and dots and, and incomplete scenes and so on. I, and as I'm looking at the, what she's looking at, I say, yes, this is trying to bring the past back with what you thought was going to preserve it for you, but what actually probably gives you more questions than it does answers. And that's where I thought she was so brilliant. They're just clips from here and there. No conclusion. There's no conversation to let you know what she's really thinking. But it is a very human experience as she looks back on her dad, who apparently was troubled. He has something going on in his life. Now, it's inferred from various uh, encounters that he has that he himself may be a closeted gay. Mm -hmm. And this is crucial to the story because, of course, the, the daughter grows up to be a gay woman, and she may be trying to draw from these videos, was he going through some of the struggles in his life that I ended up going through? Um, and the director, Charlotte Wells, has been interviewed since then, and her comment is, she is gay also, and her comment is, assume that my lead characters are gay unless I otherwise tell you. Oh, isn't that interesting? Yes, yes. Because it's not an immediate inference that you could make from what the details she gives you, which I, again, I love. It's like... You, you don't have to give me an ending that makes sense for anything that I see. I got it already. By the time I get to the ending, if it's a good piece of art, I, I've got so much going already that it's nice to have the ending, but I don't, I don't require it. And, and this is similar to the fragment, the kind of fragmentary approach that she takes here. Yeah, she doesn't want to take you on a linear storytelling. <laughs> she wants you to focus on your emotions. Yes. Because an 11-year-old girl is going to perceive this, this situation very differently from an adult. Oh, yeah. So you're getting two perspectives. <laughs> you're getting the daughter's perspective, and then you know in these, the brief cuts with the adult, you're getting a very different take on those same images. And how about the coming of age? The, um, the coming of age, this is, this is a great coming of age story. Isn't this it? Is, isn't yeah. it? And it, this is how it's often been reviewed as a coming of age story. Although that coming of age is lapsed by 20 years between when we see the girl um, in the in the videos and when we see the adult version. But I was, and we're talking about realism here. Yes. I found the coming of age so fantastically realistic. That is, as I watched and actually walked with this young girl at 11, the things that she was experiencing, a little bit of the older teens yeah. to whom she's attracted in the sense she wants to become part of them. She could play billiards. They say, okay, you're in. And it, getting her kiss, maybe her first kiss. She's a bit of a tomboy. Yeah. She would rather hang out at the arcade. She would yes. rather be playing pool yes. with the older this guys. Great. However, you see the reaction on her face when he, she has her first kiss with a, a, a comparable age boy. She doesn't really seem to be getting anything out of it. She doesn't really seem to be enjoying it. <laughs> Although, it was from the back of her head. Well, you, you do get a brief glimpse of her, oh, yeah, yeah. And, and, she's, yeah, and she's clear. And this is something that Charlotte Wells has commented on, is that she clearly is not enjoying the kiss. <laughs> so maybe a precursor to events that would go on. Well, well, again, I love I do. We seem to be giving away plot when there isn't any. But what I, I think we're okay giving away spoilers on <laughs> this know. one, because I know when you and I watched it for the first time, we were kind of scratching our heads a little, too, yeah. uh, saying, you know, what was that? But then when, we, when I read interviews with Charlotte Wells, and I, I, you, it, put, it fills in a lot of the pieces. So I don't think sp hearing spoilers is going to hurt Well, what I, what I like is how she shares this kiss with Dad. Yes. She tells him yeah. about it. And you're, it, it confirms your assessment that it really wasn't a big deal for her. And she wasn't necessarily enjoying it that no. much. It was a, a, a rite of passage. And it also reinforces that she really loves her father. Um, you get she lives with her mother, and you get the the impression that their father and the mother have a very good post marriage relationship. They get along fine. Uh, they live in two different cities, so he doesn't get to see his daughter very often. And this was a rare opportunity for him to spend a few days with his daughter to celebrate his thirtieth birthday. All right, Ken.
uh, you know what happens. We're we're at, at our <laughs> limit. But I do need you before people go to to back talk mm -hmm. to our uh, our longer version of this show on podcast at the WCBE uh, podcast experience. Before they get a chance to go there to hear more of our blather, if you could believe that, <laughs> uh, what do you advise? I advise that this movie <laughs> was less deserving of a Best Actor nomination than it was deserving of a Best Picture nomination. Yes. And it is actually streaming on Prime. It's streaming on Prime. So there is, See it, folks. Uh, at least I, I'll bet our yeah. one listener will actually might even go there. See it, folks, but don't be afraid to look up a little bit about the film before you watch it to fill in the blanks so that you have a or, better understanding. And that's interesting. Or don't. Or don't. And or then don't. listen to our show after. And then watch it again. Yes. <laughs>